All right, we're going to try to get into it. I know we may still have some people working their way in, but since we're getting a little bit of a late start and I rarely make it through my material anyways, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So uh, I want to start with this passage that we looked at a few weeks ago uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Um, it's not all up on the screen. I'm going to read a little bit more than that, but I especially want to highlight this, this passage here. Uh, so starting in verse 5 of Deuteronomy chapter 6, he says, uh, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. These words that I command you today shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. Uh, you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down. And when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so we read that verse a few weeks ago and talked kind of about the idea that clearly this idea of passing faith from one generation to the next is not just a once a week thing. It's consistent and constant. Uh, and tonight I want us to focus especially on that uh, section here uh, in verse 7 where it talks about teaching and talking because teaching and talking require conversations, require communications. Um, and as, as we work through this uh, lesson tonight, one word I want us to keep in the back of our minds is intentional. Um, parenting requires us to be intentional. And even if it's not from a perspective of a parent, even if we're talking about like we have, we as the church trying to help the next generation, it, it still requires us being intentional, making decisions each and every day that we're going to have these kinds of conversations. Um, and so when I was reading this book, they started with this illustration, and it made me, uh, I don't know, I was offended by it, so I'm going to share it with you. Um, they said, imagine if we placed a microphone in your home, a recording device in your home that recorded all of your conversations throughout the week. And then at the end of the week, you got to come back and, and listen through some of those conversations. Uh, what, would it, what would it tell you about you and your family? Uh, I could tell you some things that would tell about my family. Uh, Penny doesn't have a filter. She just says what's on her mind. That's one thing you'd learn. Uh, I talk too much about football. That, those are things. But I wonder how often the, the subjects of God and faith and spiritual things uh, would come up. Some of you may be sitting there thinking, honestly, I feel pretty good about it, and that's great. Uh, keep doing that. Keep being intentional in that way. Some of you may be sitting there thinking, honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if I listened through a week of conversations and the only spiritual conversation that came up was me yelling at my kids to get ready for church. Like, that's, that's it. Um, if we are going to do this, if we're going to be people who are teaching and speaking to our kids about spiritual things, we have to have spiritual conversations. And we've already mentioned the idea that I know that for a lot of us, those kinds of conversations don't feel organic. They don't feel normal because we're not used to having them. But that's not an excuse not to have them. That is a reason for us to get to practicing. All right? Say something real quick. Yep. One comment out of the way. You can have as many comments as you want, as long as they're not as le long as Levi's comments tonight. <laughs> I try to do this with Clayton, but this is what I hear. Why does everything got to be about God? Hey, we're, and we're going to get to that because I, I got a, a little section here that's just for the Claytons of the world because <laughs> I had a brother that was that way. It's like, what? Every, everything always has to be about God. And my dad, being a smart aleck like me, would just say, right, everything is about God. Uh, but hey, we're going to talk about that because that's a great point. Um, and that's, that's the balance is we want to talk about it, uh, but we also don't want to just beat our kids over the head with it to the point where they don't want to talk about it. And so how do you find a balance where it does feel more natural and they want to be uh, included in that? Because when we're on the one extreme where we don't have those conversations, uh, two things happen. Number one is we don't get opportunities to discuss spiritual things with our kids, obviously, which means 
if they have spiritual questions, they're not coming to me. They're going to ask somebody else. And that somebody else is going to be someone at school or someone uh, that's one of their teachers or uh, hopefully you might be like, well, maybe it'll be somebody at church. Maybe. Or maybe it's some random YouTuber who puts together really good YouTube videos and so he must know what he's talking about and that's where my kids are going to go for that source. Uh, so that's the first thing that happens. The second thing that happens when we don't talk about those spiritual things is we show our kids, maybe unintentionally, but we show our kids that those things aren't important to us. Because whether you accept it or not, we talk about things that are important to us. We talk about things that we are passionate about. Um, I go through these weird phases where I get really passionate about weird things because that's the kind of person I am. I just finished this book about a guy and his crew getting iced in in the waters of Antarctica and this story of survival, and it was incredible. And I'm sure Carrie is so, so tired of me walking into the kitchen. I mean, can you imagine they had to cut their own toes off? And she's like, great, thank you. I don't care. Uh, why am I talking about that? Because it's something on my mind. It's something at the moment, for whatever weird reason, I'm really passionate about. So we talk about the things we care about. And so if I don't ever have spiritual conversations with my kids, they go, oh, that, that's not important to them. They'll sit and talk my ear off about OU football, but we don't ever talk about spiritual things. Or they can go on and on about this subject or this subject, but we never talk about spiritual things. And you don't mean to show them that, but what you've showed them is, I don't, those things don't matter to me. That extends beyond the parent-child relationship. Uh, some of you have been involved with our youth group, doing stuff with our youth group, and I can be guilty of this. Having relationships that are very shallow and always just like, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. What's new? Oh, great. And never having good, deep spiritual conversations. Well, at some point, whether I mean to or not, I show those kids that those things just aren't that important. We're just kind of doing this because it's what we do, but it's not that important to me. And so we need to be careful about it. Uh, and that way, uh, and that means making sure that these conversations are a regular part of our life. So a couple things that we've, we've been doing, like a, here's some things that they've found from their research and then some practical stuff, because then we're going to get into uh, some of what Bob was talking about. So here's some of their findings that they uh, pulled from their, uh, the research they did. Number one, most parents don't talk about faith with their kids. Uh, you may not like to be generalized and be like, that's not me. It just says most, not all. Uh, but in their research, they found that out of 11,000 teenagers that they surveyed who grew up going to church, 12% claimed that they had regular conversations with their mother about spiritual things. 12%. Dads, 5%. <laughs> well, I don't talk about anything. <laughs> uh, and, and this isn't just the random public. These are kids who grew up going to church with their parents. 12% said they had regular conversations about spiritual things with their mom, only 5% uh, with their dads. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. And I know there are times where uh, I'm one of those dads that falls into that 95%. I'm not having the conversations like I need to. And it's not because I don't think they're important. It's because I'm caught up in the affairs of everyday life and I'm so busy trying to handle the other things that it just gets pushed to the back burner. Uh, and that's unfortunate. So most Christians are, uh, most Christian families are not having these conversations. This shouldn't surprise you, but the second thing they found is that students whose parents talk about faith have more sticky faith. I wish they had said stickier faith, but that's not how they said it. I don't want to quote it like they said it. Um, this makes sense. Naturally, if you're having more spiritual conversations at home, those things are going to become more a part of who you are. So this should not shock you. Um, some of this is just asking questions on the way home from church. Hey, what did you guys learn about in Bible class today? And they, they share. That's the easiest one that I use on the way home from church or when we're out at lunch on Sunday. What did you guys learn about in Bible class? And my kids, thankfully, are still at an age where they'll tell me. We learned about David, and he had a sling, and he threw that rock. I know some of your kids. What did you learn about in Bible class? Oh, no, like God? <laughs> okay. Anything specific? Oh, no. Why are you, like, quizzing me? I get that. We're going to get back to that. Uh, but some of this is just 
questions, simple questions. Or what did you think about the lesson this morning? Did Tim say anything that kind of jumped out to you? And again, they may share. They may say, Tim spoke this morning. You're like, oh, yeah, he did. Um, but these conversations are more than just us asking them. It's also us sharing. This is one thing I'm not very good about. I'll ask my kids, what did you guys talk about in Bible class? And then I don't share what I talked about. And I should, because I want them to see that this isn't me quizzing you to make sure you paid attention in Bible class. This is us talking and, and sharing about those things. And so the more you do that, they find, uh, the more their faith sticks. All right? This one also shouldn't surprise you. Christian parents tend to avoid tricky subjects. Um, my kids are eight and six, and I've already asked questions. I'm like, oh, go ask mom. <laughs> not, not a dad question, thank you. Um, look, I'll, I'll leave it up to your imagination to decide what kind of tricky subjects your kids uh, want to talk about. Um, and here's one thing they found. Even when our kids say they don't want to talk about those subjects with us, really they do. Uh, they are just usually teenagers, and they need to make it sound like, oh, I don't want to talk about that with mom and dad. But most of the time, they are looking for answers, and you're someone they trust. Um, and so again, those subjects, if they're not getting answers from us, we're not having conversations, they're going somewhere uh, to get their information. And so I'm already guilty of this. And I'm not saying that there aren't conversations that are good for girls to have with their moms or boys to have with their dads. I get all that. Um, but there are some subjects that, sadly, we've got to a point where we're like, actually, I would just prefer the schools to, to handle that. Well, I don't know if you know much about our schools, but I'm not sure you want our schools handling those tricky subjects. Uh, those tricky subjects, of all the things you could be talking about with your kids, are the ones we should be most interested in saying, no, that's, that's a conversation we're going to have here. I have made it my practice with the youth group um, when we talk about subjects like purity uh, or more, uh, sexual immorality, we talk about what the scriptures say, but I'm very careful about going into details about like what that means for you and your family because that's not my responsibility. Uh, I have found that like m my standard for modesty does not matter with your kids. Now, you may disagree, but I, I want those conversations happening at home. And so I know youth ministers before who have said, no, like, I'm going to tell you this is too short and this is too long. Too long is that? <laughs> too long hair for boys. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that I, I have decided uh, that's not going to be what I do because I, not that I don't think those conversations are important. I just think that's not my job. That's, that's family's jobs. And so we need to, those tough subjects, we need to be willing to get in the trenches and have those conversations. All right, a couple more findings they, uh, they have. Parents who talk about doubts help build sticky faith. Um, I can tell you for a fact that kids have questions about God. And a lot of them are actually nervous about bringing them up with mom and dad because they think they'll be viewed a certain way, negatively. If I say, not even... I don't believe in God. But if I just say, like, if there's God, why, why does he let bad things happen to people? That, guys, that's a real question that me as a minister, I wrestle with. Um, and we have sometimes painted this picture to the younger generation that, well, you better sort that out. Because when we're here together, you, you, you better just have faith. There's no room for doubts here. Uh, and look, faith is very important. Um, but I want my kids to talk to me when they have questions and doubts and, and things they wonder about with God. And I'm going to talk about mine. I, I'm, we'll, we'll talk about this here in a second. I'm not saying that you need to pull your five-year-old aside and be like, there are days I don't know if I believe in God. Because your five-year-old is like, what? God's not real. No, look, based on maturity, there are good ways to have those conversations. But when your kid comes up and says, I don't, why, why do we have to go to church? Our first response is usually what? Defensive. Oh, rebellious. A rebellious kid. They don't want to go to church. It could just be that we have for so long just hammered into their head that they have to go to church. And finally, they've been like, why? And they genuinely want to know. And those are conversations we should be willing to have. Like, you know what? 
That is a really great question. I had a kid in our youth group this week that texted me and said, is there a verse in the Bible that says I have to go to church? And I know that kid. And so I know what he meant. He's not being a smart aleck. He's not looking for a loophole out. He wants to know, like, why do we go to church? And so we talked about it. I know if I didn't work in youth ministry, I'm used to that. What just happened there, that's normal for us. Uh, I know if I didn't work in youth ministry and I got a text from a kid saying, is there a verse that says I have to go to church? My first response is going to be, oh, that's a kid who doesn't want to go to church and he's just looking for a way out. Not always. Sometimes they just have genuine questions and we need to be a place where they can talk about those things. All right, last finding. Uh, students with sticky faith have parents who encourage individual thought. Uh, what, what they mean by this is not just like, well, whatever you want to believe is fine. You still guide and direct. But I think a lot of us probably grew up in homes where you were told this is what the Bible says and this is what it means and you need to believe it. Uh, and we just do. And for some of us, we come from a generation where that was very normal. We just accepted it and we just, we have a generation right now who asks questions and they want to know why and rather than just saying well because that's what the bible says especially when it's things that the bible doesn't just come right out and say uh, our kids have questions all the time uh, about things that the bible doesn't just come right out and say now i think we can apply scripture and get but if we just are constantly like well this is what you believe and this is what you believe or when i get youth kids that say what do we believe about this? I'm like, well, I don't know what you will believe about it, but this is what I think the Bible says, because I want them to make those decisions on their own. I want them to come to a point where it's not dad is telling them this is our belief system. It's dad helping guide them to understand what scriptures say. So hopefully none of those findings blew your mind and you're like, wow, that's shocking to me that families that talk about spiritual things, uh, those kids tend to hold on to them. But those are some findings. So now let's get into what I think is more important, this, the practical stuff. And just so you know, we're not getting through all this, so we'll come back and cover uh, some more of it uh, in a couple weeks. But number one, uh, we need to provide space and time for quality conversations. Uh, that doesn't mean everything has to be overly structured. Your kid comes home from school and now we're entering into conversation time. And we're like, this, this is weird. But you need to find times where it feels normal to get to talk. Um, that requires us being intentional. Uh, Carrie and I, we don't always talk about it, but sometimes I just feel like we, we get on the same page and we're like, we, meal times for us. That, and it feels like the more we try that, the more my kids are monsters at meal times. But we're, we're figuring it out. But for us, meal time is a time where we're like, that's when we talk. Uh, we're not going to sit and watch TV while we eat. We're going to sit around the table. I'm going to ask them about their day. I, I'm not just going to say like, all right, Craig, tell me something spiritual. And Craig's like, I don't know. God is good. Wow, great insight, Craig. Thank you. These peas are delightful. Uh, we usually just start, I've mentioned, asking them like, what was the high of your day? What was a really good thing today? And they'll start with that. And then they'll start with something that was low. And then... <laughs> I know not everybody is an office watcher, uh, and that's fine. There, there's this episode where the boss has to sit and have some sessions uh, with the HR representative, who he does not like, uh, about his past behaviors, and he doesn't want to talk. So he's just, and so the HR guy, Toby, just says, hey, let's just play some games. And he, the boss is like, great. So they're sitting there playing games, and as they're playing games, Toby gets him and he starts sharing and talking. And so sometimes you got to trick your kids a little bit. <laughs> uh, if you just suddenly walk into the room and sit down and be like, we're going to talk about faith, your kids are going to get freaked out. Your kids are going to get freaked out. But if you're just asking them, hey, what was the high of your day? What was the low of your day? And then suddenly you just, well, just sprinkle in a little spiritual things. Uh, Again, it, it goes back to what we talked about a couple weeks ago about trying not to compartmentalize things. There aren't spiritual times and non-spiritual times. To answer Clayton's question that you brought up, Bob, everything is about God. Part of the reason I bring up God all the time is because 
He's a part of everything. And, and that takes maturity for our kids to understand that. But we don't just have to be talking about what we did at church today in order to have spiritual conversations. You can, Penny can share something mean that someone said at school and say, oh man, I bet that was really hard. How did that make you feel? I was mad. I, I wanted to hit him. Yeah, you did. But what, what does Jesus say we should do when people mistreat us? We, we don't mistreat them. That's right. Look, boom, she thinks we're playing a game. I just, spiritual. And it, it's not a trick. It's like, that's how conversations should take place. Um, but for some of us, we're just not in the practice of doing that. And I get that. Uh, be patient with yourself. But this right here requires being intentional. And so pick some times that you specifically are going to say, all right, those are times where I'm going to try to have spiritual conversation. Here are some uh, ideas. I mentioned meal times. I think that's great because they're not going anywhere. They want to eat, and so they're going to be, be there. Uh, driving home from church is a great opportunity because it's fresh on your mind. They're in the car. They're stuck. And so you just say, what did you, you think about what Tim preached on this morning? Or what did, what did you learn about in Bible class? Uh, you get opportunities like that to start having conversations, uh, but you have to pick times that work for them. If you've got really little kids, right before bed, it's a great time to do that. You come in, you pray with them, just talk about your day. That's great. Older kids, I know it is harder. You got to find time. Uh, and this, again, connects, even if you don't have kids at home, if you're just looking for ways to invest in the next generation here at church, you know, not every single kid that you talk to every week, do you need to have like a full, deep, super serious conversation about faith, but pick one kid that you know well, and every once in a while just say, hey, how are things going? Are you excited about going to camp this year? Uh, what have you guys been studying in your Sunday morning Bible class? And then once they start sharing, ask them questions. Uh, that is healthy. It's healthy for our kids to have quite, uh, conversations with their parents and with other adult Christians about spiritual things, all right? But that requires us being intentional and finding space and time to do it. I hate this one. I hate this one because I had already prepared this last night as I was standing in the kitchen lecturing my kids uh, about dinner time. So learn to listen and ask questions, not lecture. As somebody who teaches Bible classes a lot, it is really hard for me not to slip into lecture mode, right? You can't carry knows what's up. Um, my dad was the same way. He was a preacher. We used to tease that when my dad would talk to us about things, everything always had three points and an invitation. <laughs> so that's how preachers talk. Um, I think we often feel like spiritual conversations need to be me telling you how it is. Let me, let me have a spiritual conversation. You need to stop doing this and you need to stop doing this because God doesn't like those things. Sometimes a spiritual conversation is me asking them and then just... Now, they may say something or ask a question back, and I, and I talk, but it doesn't always have to be us lecturing. Sometimes it's just listening and asking questions. And like I said, I'm no expert at this. Last night, my kids really struggled with mealtime and just not, well, acting like maniacs at mealtime. And I just caught myself in the middle of the kitchen going on and on and on about, like, why meal? And then I just was like, what am I doing? This is what I'm about to tell people not to do tomorrow night. Um, so... Try your best not to lecture. Some of us naturally are just lecturers, all right? We gotta be careful of that. Uh, number three, do not avoid the touchy subjects. Um, you may be nervous as could be as you have these conversations, but I'm just telling you, you would rather sit and be nervous having uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations with your kids than allowing some of the other people in their life that want to give them advice and opinions on those subjects. Uh, so, look, you may stumble, you may fall flat on your face, but just do it. Uh, have those conversations. No kid, no kid, when you try to have the sex talk with them, is going to be like, yes, I've been waiting for this. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. <laughs> Nobody. E even, like I said, even if inside they're like, I'm glad I'm having this conversation, they're a teenager. And so they're going to be like, ew, this is disgusting. And you are going to be the parent, and you're like, it is, but we're going to talk about it. Um, and you help them walk through that, all right? And so I understand why people want to avoid touchy subjects because they make us 
feel uncomfortable. But at the same time, I don't understand why we want to pass off some of the most important uh, and honestly divisive subjects onto people that really have no business handling those things. So jump right in. Uh, get in there. Talk about it. They're already uncomfortable. So just tell yourself it's not because of me. It's because of the subject, even though sometimes it's because of you. And that's okay, too. All right? Um, okay, so Bob mentioned kids that don't want to talk or, or that don't want to talk about spiritual things. And what I want to tell you is sometimes you've got to be creative. Um, and that, that involves trying to avoid the now we're shifting into a spiritual conversation and, and now we're, we're not. And look, there may be times where you're having a conversation about something else and it begins to lean towards spiritual things. And they do. They're like, why, why are we talking about spiritual things again? You got to be patient with your kids and, and continue to work. Some of that is a maturity thing. There are just kids that it's something they struggle with. Um, but here's something else I think w will help. Um, I think there are a lot of folks, and I, I fully understand and to a degree understand this sentiment, the idea that my, my kids don't need a friend. What they need is a parent. And that, that idea is correct. They do need someone that is a parent. They're not just looking for a buddy. And I know that a lot of parents are just that. They're just a buddy. They just want to gossip with their kids and just do the fun stuff, and they don't want to do any of the hard stuff. And I'm not saying we shouldn't, uh, that we should do that. However, if there is not, I mean, like when I think of my dad, not, and obviously it's different now that I'm out of the house, but my dad is my friend. Um, I could call my dad up and ask him about anything. And part of that is because at a young age, uh, even though I viewed him as my dad, he also invested time in which he was just building up this relationship. And so sometimes the reason our kids don't want to have conversations with us about spiritual things is truthfully, <coughs> our kids don't want to talk to us because all they view us as is the disciplinarian and the authoritarian because that's all we ever do sometimes you just need to spend time with your kids and just decide like this is just going to be for fun uh darcy and penny have different interests i can take them each and just go invest in them if your kid likes to go bowling take that kid build that relationship and as you build that relationship guess what happens now okay i'll talk to you um, I'll open up a little bit more. I have found, it's not always the case, but I have found in general, kids that don't want to talk about spiritual things with their parents, it's because they just don't want to talk to their parents. That's not the person they go to to talk about serious things. Um, and so it takes work. And look, if, if any of you are a parent and you haven't figured out this yet, being a parent is hard. Every single, guess what? I go to sleep every night and then I wake up. You know what I see every single morning standing by my bed? Penny, she's there again. <laughs> it's like, oh, still here, huh? Yep, not going anywhere. And every single day, uh, you, you've, I've seen the commercial that's like, mommies don't get a sick day. I, I can't call it Carrie, hey. Just want to let you know I won't be dadding today. <laughs> She's not feeling super great. I and mean, Carrie's, I'm sure, is sitting back there thinking, he doesn't call, but there are days. <laughs> there are days he takes off. Um, it is hard being a parent. Just handling all the, like, discipline and everything is hard. And then on top of that, now this guy is standing up front and telling me, I just got to, like, work on building a good, almost friendship with my kid? Yeah, yeah it's a lot of work. But you know who kids do like to talk to? Their friends. That's who they like talking to. Um, and so, no, I'm not saying you got to kick all the serious parenting to the curb and just be like, I'm just going to be their buddy. But you better be working on building a good, genuine friendship, lifelong friendship with your kids. And the more you do that, the more you invest in them in that way, just like Toby tricking Michael with his games, eventually, they are. They're going to open up and start asking questions and stuff. Uh, the book mentions a lady who could not get her kid to ever talk. And then she thought, you know what? My kid loves going to see movies. And so once a month, she would say, hey, 
this movie's out. You want to go see it? And he's like, yeah. And then guess what? On the drive home, you know what they did? Talked about the movie. And she's like, it was the first time he would just like sit and talk to me. Because guess what? She was talking to him about something he wanted to talk about. And then slowly, as they talk more about the things that interest him, he starts sharing things that he hadn't before. But, and Bob, I'm, I'm just as guilty. I'm sure lots of us parents can admit to this. There are times where we, we can't understand why our kids don't want to talk about what we are wanting to talk about. And it's because they feel like all we're talking about is what we want to talk about. We got to be interested in, in their interests. Clayton loves baseball. And I'm sure you guys spend tons of time talking about baseball. And then you, you sprinkle things in. Your kids are big readers. Talk about what book they're reading. And then you slowly find ways. It's a process. It's not an overnight fix, and I'm not an expert. Here's, uh, here's the me telling you this stuff is telling, is telling on myself. Uh, hey, we're all guilty, Bob. Uh, this is a safe place. No I'm worries. I'm afraid that I've been so hard on him on things that I have freaking created a gap, a wedge that can never be fixed. And that's, I mean, there used to be a time, you know, you talk about Penny coming to bed. There used to be times. Hey, Daddy, how was your day? You know, and he talked to him. And now it's, it's their friends, and that drives me nuts. And I know, I'm not, I've been that age, I get it. You sure. Know, and they're coming. And I've said the stuff, I'm not your friend, I'm your dad. You know, when I, I'll be your friend when I get older. Sure. What I mean by that is, you know, you, you got to show me respect. You got Sure. Show and, and you're right by that. You know, I'm closer to Daddy I was, you know, now than I ever was as a teenager. And, and that's why I'm saying I'm th that idea of I'm your parent, not your friend, is not wrong. But sometimes we just focus so much on that that we forget about the relationship part. Bob, just so you know, because I don't think there's anybody in this room that's like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm coming to this class because I have it all figured out. I mean, like, we all struggle. And the one thing I want to tell Bob and I want to tell all of you, if your kid still has breath in their lungs, it's not too late. It's not. Bob, I spend a lot of time with Clayton. And so I get to see, uh, look, I think we all agree we as parents often get to see the worst of our kids and that's because they feel safest at home and so they put up a mask while they're at school and they can be the kind nice version and then they come home and guess what it's exhausting being nice to people and now I don't want to do that <laughs> and so we get and I see it already with my kids. I'll pick them up from school. I'm excited to see them. And they both get in and they're fighting and they're screaming. And this is the worst day ever. <laughs> really? This? This is it. Um, and it, I have to remind myself, it's not me. This is their safe place. And so kids automatically feel that way. But Bob, that idea that you feel like it's too late. Look, I know there are some of us who feel like, man, I, I've... I've done more damage to this point than I've done good. If your kids are still living in your home, it is not too late. And it's not too late because it's not because of your own abilities, but we have got to do a better job of trusting that God can still work on our kids and work on us. Um, that doesn't mean it's not going to take work and there's not going to be things that we've got to change. Uh, but most kids, most kids, if they see genuine uh, intentionality and change within their parents are going to be open to it. It's just going to be hard. Did you have a thought? Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say regarding the rapport that, you know, trust is a big thing, you know, so your kids can uh, trust you when, when they come and talk to you about something. And just the idea of being there, whether it's, you know, going to their events, whether it is you know, being present and not being constantly busy on your phone. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I know being a youth minister is not the same as a dad, but this is something I've experienced as a youth minister, and I have to remind myself often, especially with our young guys. Because, look, if you met teenage Jeremy, he was annoying. I mean, obnoxious beyond compare. Um, he, frustrating because he knew better, and then he still does stupid things. Um, and so I think because of that, I have that in my mind. Frequently, when I'm with our teenage guys, I catch myself correcting every little thing. And it's just, don't do that. Why'd you do that? Don't do that. And it gets to a point where I, you do. You drive a little bit of a wedge. I'm not saying you let things off the hook. I'm not saying when your kids disrespect you, it shouldn't be addressed. It should. 
But sometimes, and I'm already catching myself with, with little ones at home. Sometimes I'm like, is this right here worth the battle I'm going to go through? I don't mean le- letting bad behavior off the hook. But sometimes I'll talk with Penny and be like, well, yeah, you can't treat me that way. And you need to talk nice. And as she's leaving the room, she'll turn and just give one little like. <laughs> because she is sassy. And it's those moments where like that, that preacher's kid in me wants to be like, no, back into the kitchen. I want to work all the way back through that again. And then sometimes I have to tell myself that that's a kid. And I need to be patient. And maybe right now with me like going over all this stuff, she's gone defense mode. And now we're not making any headway. And so I need to give her some space. Look. I said this a lot. I'm going to keep saying it. I am not an expert. That's why I love that you all are sharing. Like we are walking through this together. But I will say, going back to number four, you have got to build the relationship. If the relationship's not there, the conversations aren't going to be there. Uh, They're not going to trust you. Like Ashley said, they're not going to trust you if they don't feel a, a genuine relationship. Not just a, that's my dad, or that's my mom, I'm their child, so we have a relationship. But a genuine, we do things together, we spend time together, that kind of relationship. And sometimes we have to like take off the strict mom or dad hat and just be like, for just a little bit, I'm just going to try to like be their friend. Now, like again, I'm not saying that then your kids can talk however they want to you, but sometimes kids just need us to say, hey, I just want to build us up, all right? All right, uh, we got a couple more minutes, so let's get, get through one more of these. Share your own faith, all right? And what I mean by that is not everything needs to be about them and their faith. And what one of the best things that I think we can do is when our kids are working through something that's challenging, talk about, hey, that, that's been a challenge for me. I, I'm not saying you need to do the old, you know, back when I was a kid and, and go into a long story about how you walked uphill to school both ways in the snow. Um, but if you're, if you're asking them questions, then, then turn the questions back on yourself too. Um, they mentioned this in the book and uh, I, I have not tried this, but I, I think it would be good as, as you're doing the, Hey, what, what something good that happened today? What was, you know, kind of your low of the day? They said they like to use some version of the, the question. How did you see God working in your day? Um, and they said 75% of the time, the kids are like, I don't know. I, I have no idea. And that's okay. Kids, especially when they're really young, I don't, I mean, even me as a 37-year-old, sometimes I'm like, how did I see God working today? I don't, I don't know, I don't know really, completely what that means. Um, but the more I think about it, the more I'm going to be looking for it and be like, hey, you know what? Like today I was feeling kind of discouraged and Dale popped by my office and just said a little prayer for me and like, man, that was really encouraging for me and that, I'm like, yeah, it's great. But then instead of just asking your kids, when you have those moments, share them too. Because I do think our kids sometimes feel like they're being tested. It's like, what'd you learn about in Bible class? Oh no, they just want to make sure I was paying attention. Um, Ephesians? Oh yeah, what about Ephesians? And we're trying to be a good dad, just ask them questions. But what they hear is, oh, you weren't paying attention, were you? Uh, and so do say, yeah, in our class, we're working through, I don't know, I don't ever get to go to an adult class unless I'm teaching it. So whatever you adult people learn about in Bible class, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Uh, ah, interesting. Um, or especially when it's things that are shared. Tim shares something in his sermon, and you're like, what did you think about that? Man, I thought, or hey, we, we sang that new song in church today. What did you think about that? And your kid's going to be like, yeah, we sing it at every single area wide that we go to. And you're like, oh, it was brand new to me. Right, that's great. Uh, having those conversations with shared spiritual moments are good, but you got to share your own. It was a long time. My, my dad used to get up and preach all the time. Talk about, Hey, this is what you need to do to be saved. This is what the Bible says. I was a teenager before I ever thought to ask, I wonder how my dad became a Christian. And I can remember him sitting and telling me 
about him and his decision to do that. And then he went on to talk about how my grandpa had come to become a Christian. And that, to this day, is still super valuable to me. And have you shared that with your kids? Have you talked about that? We, we want to get out of them. And, Bob, this goes back to your question. If your kids don't want to talk about spiritual things, that's okay. You, you share. You share. Uh, and now, look, they may get to a point where they're like, be quiet. I don't want to hear any more about this. Uh, but what's probably going to happen is it becomes normal for them that they're hearing spiritual things. And then at some point, they feel comfortable talking about it as well. All right. C, C notes for rest. I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to come back to this in a couple weeks. So next week, uh, we actually have a once a quarter, we encourage our youth kids to invite their friends to church with them on a Wednesday night, and we meet early. And I like to be up there because I want to meet our visitors and all. So next week, Mel has agreed. He's going to teach in here, and he's going to share some stuff about helping our kids work through conflict and how that, how that can be helpful for their faith. So do come back, uh, and then we'll keep trucking through our stuff the week after that. But I appreciate you guys being here, and I'm going to go have some words with Levi. Just kidding. <laughs>